Welcome everyone to the greatest combat sports and culture show in the entire universe, The Fight Podcast. I am your host, Serge Vicente, and we have another amazing show for you guys today. Uh, today, I am joined by the groovy one himself, Lando Venata, man. One of the most exciting fighters you'll actually find in the UFC, man. This dude is an absolute monster with a regular 11-4. Um, we're going to have a fun conversation, man. So without further ado, let me bring on Lando Venata. Lando, what's going on, brother? Welcome to the Fight Podcast. Doing very doing, man? well, man. Doing very well. How's your day going, man? Man, you know, not today. Not bad. Got a nice run. Got a little exercise, man. A little technique work. Enjoying some food now. I'm relaxing. There it is, man. Well, dude, look, I, I have to say, again, first of all, you're, you, I'm hitting you up because I said you are one of my favorite fighters, man. You're super entertaining to watch. Um, one thing that people do not know or have not seen you, you are one of those guys that is not afraid to put yourself out there. And there, cause there's always a fine line. There's guys who go out there and really are calculating. You can tell they're thinking when they're out there doing it and, and, and thinking in a bad way, overthinking things. You go out there and you seem to allow the fight to flow and come to you and you react and you're, you're really embracing the martial artist, man. How did you get to the point that, I mean, you feel so comfortable? Dude, I've sparred. I've been in there. I never get that damn comfortable. <laughs> I mean, I've been like a lifelong athlete. You know, I grew up racing BMX. I grew up racing quads, dirt bikes, like playing football, play lacrosse, so wrestled. You know, just like I've always had uh, an easy time putting myself in that zone. Like I've never had the that mental block of where it's like overthinking and, and over complicating things. I, I've never had a hard time just like letting go and having fun. Well, dude, it, it's funny because that shows. I mean, prime example: your first fight in the UFC, short notice fight against Tony Ferguson, and I'm halfway in the fight. I'm jumping up and down on my couch. I'm like, "Yo, he's about to finish this dude. This is nuts." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, how was yeah. it? Just, just think of just being in terms of again. You're a UFC vet now. You're a contender. You're out there doing your thing, uh, but having something coming out like a short notice event, like, yo, you're at the big show now. You're in the UFC. Oh, and by the way, you got to go against this monster. How, how is that? How, what is that feeling like? When I fought Tony, when I got that call, uh, I mean, it was dope, man. Like. And, you know, at that point, I was already training with I was training with Cowboy, nice. Cowboys wing, um, Cub Swanson. I was under his wing, Clay Guida. Um, I had trained with you know Pettis a lot of times. <laughs> now, I've already trained with like top five guys in multiple divisions on a daily basis. I was like Tony Ferguson, like Ilya, let's go. Let's do it. You know, it was, it was like oh, Mike. Finally, like, that's the shit I'm working for for the past. When I get in, when I was 24, so for the past like 12 years of my life, basically, like this is what I'm working towards. So like. We're here now. Let's make it happen. Dude, it, it's, that has to be like just that adrenaline rush, man. So let me ask you this. Um, you, I know you've played, like I said, multiple sports you've gone through, man. And being somebody who seems to really embrace like that martial arts, that, that Bushido code almost, man. Um, what was it for yourself that really got you into MMA? Um, you know, man. I first got introduced to it. My aunt went to a like some party in Vegas way back in, I would see, 15, 16 years ago. So 2003, 2004, and she brought back like this UFC satchel and it had a UFC 30 and a UFC 31 video in it. And I just come home from school and I'd watch these fights like every day, every day. And I've always been goal driven. I was like, I wanted to be like an Air Force pilot, and then I wanted to be Army Special Forces, and then I was like, all these different things, and then I found fighting. And I was like, nah, nah. like that, that's it. <laughs> like that's, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And then I kind of just stuck with it since then, man. That's what's, you know what's funny, you say the videos. <laughs> I think people forget. You remember like having to watch UFC fights? I had to go to Blockbuster and get like VHSs yeah. to watch some joints, man. <laughs> like it's crazy when you really think about it. Uh, Carmen Electra was like, the female face of the UFC was Carmen Electra. Ooh, that was so long ago. You're right. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I think we'll do that. That she had, she was a big part of it. That's fine. I do it. That's such a long time ago. I remember, and it's it's funny when it's like they weren't even trying. It was just Dana Dana and Carmen Electra. That's all they were showing. <laughs> That's all they would show out there. Yeah. Like Tito, Randy, Carlos Newton, Pedro Hizo. Yeah. Seriously, the, the fight that got me hooked, the, the one that got me like super hooked, I've talked about it a few times, man. Pedro Hizzo versus Josh Barnett won. It, it was a knockout, it was a yes. dirty. Pedro Hizzo just pieced him up the whole time. 
And then he, he hits him with a combo, and you see Barnett just, like, totally dazed and, like, kind of stuck. He's, like, out on his feet. He's stuck. And Hizzo takes a step off to the right side and fires his right yeah. hand right on the temple and just puts him down clean. It was, like, my favorite knockout of all time. Hey, yo, and people forget how good Pedro Hizzo was. Like, yeah. they don't – I feel like they don't yeah. talk about him nearly enough. Like, he's one of those heavyweight dudes that we're like, yo, this dude was legit, like, super fucking mm-hmm. legit. And nobody mm-hmm. talks about, especially when we're talking about like some of the greatest heavyweights of all time. I feel like people like they'll throw Kane out there. Obviously, they will throw Fedor out there. Uh, you, P- Verdum is like the dark horse that people will talk about, but yeah. they never talk about Pedro Jose. He's up in that mix, man. Dude is a monster. Yeah, just like it's from such an early era where it wasn't evolved yet. So I feel like the people from that generation don't ever get thrown in it as much. But man, for his generation, they do yeah, kill it. Mo- well, let me ask you this, dude. What, who is. Like I said, who are your martial arts influences? Um, straight up, like in mm-hmm. MMA, I don't really have many. That's cool. I pull a lot of influence from from other athletes. Okay. So, uh, I see your shirt, Kobe. Yeah, got to, bro. Uh, I just finished reading yeah. biography, yeah. man, the other week. You know, uh, just finished reading that, man. Kobe's a He's fucking man. man. Dude, I, I can't lie, that that one hurt. That that hit me deep, man. That yeah. I think. Rest in peace. That, but. You know, it's as terrible as, as it is. Like when he when he mm-hmm. passed, uh, like I, I was never like I haven't watched basketball since Jason Kidd and the Nets played Sacramento in the finals. It was the last time I watched basketball. It's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I haven't watched. Minute, yeah, it was like on a middle school or high school something like that. And when Kobe passed, I started like getting back into it. I started focusing on Kobe. I started like watching the videos of him and uh, reading about him and reading about his work ethic and stuff. And that was like when I was getting ready for my last fight against yeah. Yancey. And that like a big role in my mindset coming into that fight and the mob mentality just that like work and shit. That's like, he, he, that, that terrible, as tragic, as terrible as it is, unfortunately, like, his death played a huge, a huge positive role in you know, where well, I mean, it, it's, I but I think that's what people like that kind of you know come from we 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 take inspiration from those type of things you know um and and just even speaking for myself and again i would get back into it but that that is when he's one of those guys that you look at you're like damn like you see everything that he does so the fact that you can actually sit there and take like inspiration that can build like that Mm -hmm. and i'm sure like it's like everyone's watching the last dance and shit with mike and all that other stuff people are taking that so i think that's super dope um do you have any other like sports influencers that kind of like had you kind of influence you yeah yeah um I mean, yeah, I mean, any, any, like, great athlete, so I look at, like, Muhammad Ali, yeah. I look at Manny Pacquiao, stylistically for both yeah. of them, uh, Lomachenko, okay. uh, Giorgio Rosian, you know, I look at a lot of, like, a lot of great strikers, man, have a great, like, a lot of influence from that, um, a lot of great wrestlers, too, you know, back in the day, when I was wrestling, Brent Metcalf was my guy, like, I wanted, wanted to be like Brent Metcalf, like, that is, from yeah. Iowa, just a fucking... Savage, you just wanted to break people all the time. He was a bad dude. Yeah, he is a bad dude. Well, for you, for you, for you, okay, so for you, man, again, it's it's dope that you're you're pulling and you're going. And I said, you seem like you got definitely a, like a dope boxing influence, also, man. Um, do you actually still follow the sport and watch the sport? Yeah, boxing. Yeah, Kurt. Right, boxing. Boxing. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I don't follow it. Like, I I don't know. The, int- the intricacies of all the weight classes, like I know MMA, right, right. but yeah, I do follow. Yeah, yeah, I do follow. I'm about to say, bro, I, I, I second, I second that one, man. When I want to talk boxing, I bring somebody on to help me out with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not an expert on boxing, but I, I really enjoy watching fights and studying it a lot. And I can pull. I feel like boxers are the best strikers out there. Yeah. So I feel like when it comes to angles, when it comes to movement, when it comes to things that you can interlay into MMA. Um, so I, I get pulled a lot of influence and a lot of technical aspects from boxing. So I, like, I'm a big fan of watching the sport. Not a big fan of following the like the rankings. I feel and stuff. you. No, I could I could I could respect that. Um, you are currently at like say great at, at Team Jacksons, one of the best teams in the world, just hands down. Um, so I'm actually not. Okay, so what you, you're at? Jack, you said Jackson's affiliate, yeah. right? Yeah. So I broke off from uh, Greg. Wink and okay. Six Gun, it's in uh, I don't know, okay. two years ago, probably two years ago. By the same time that Cowboy went on yeah. the Joe Rogan podcast, yeah. 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 So around the same time, I left. Um, basically the same time, and then my buddy, a couple of my buddies, reopened the old Pro Gym, so the old yeah. location. It's still a great mm-hmm. building, 
uh, my coach Nick Gerso, he's the one that runs yeah. the gym. I've heard I've heard the yeah. name before. Yeah, what? yeah. So it's um, I, I'm with him, Harry St. Ledger, who's a Hendrick yeah. black belt, judo, you know, Olympic alternate, um, <laughs> national champion, and everything. And yeah, so I'm over there. Nice. with our own small team. Well, okay, so when that's it, you still have a bunch of high-level guys, but being the yes. fact that now it is a more smaller, condensed team, how do you feel like that's benefited you? And, I mean, your last fight, you looked amazing against Yancey. So, I mean, hey. how, how for yourself, like, how has that small team benefited you from being, because Jackson's was, like, this huge conglomerate, essentially. Now, bringing it down, how is that for you? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you, first off, man, like, the coaching is better. Okay. The, co- the coaching is better. Um, like, I feel like the coaching over there got stuck in a rub for a little bit. I don't want to talk too badly about anybody. Yeah. But uh, I feel like my coaches I have right now are very high level. We work a lot more basics, which is something that you will go back and watch more fights, you know, with McDessie, with Ferguson, with Tamer. It's like, yeah, I got a lot of flashy stuff. I do a lot of athletic stuff, and I've got great offense. But I was lacking defense. I was lacking some basics, both on the feet, on the ground. And so over here, we worked it a lot more, and we got a small dynamic, man. So it's like I have, we have, I probably got like four or five guys that are my size, and I got guys that that are, that are you know coming up in the ranks, so they're not as good as me. And then I have my coaches who are you know much better than me. So I I got people that are beating me up, and I got people that I can beat up a little bit, and I don't have a bunch of random people coming in all the time. That's the problem with these big factory guys. You just got random faces coming in all the time, and they they want to they want to make a name for themselves. They're like, oh, I'm in here sparring with Lando. Oh, I'm in here sparring with Holly. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna go 100. percent Like I'm trying to get this motherfucker. You know. So it's a and it's a much more of a family environment now. It's like well, well, it's real it's real tight over there. You know, it's like everybody's got everybody's back. It's just fun. Dude, it's a lot more. Fun. I've I've realized, and I I have hear this more and more. Those places that have more of that family atmosphere. I feel like people tend to really gel together and those teams end up, I mean, like, look, it's like city kickboxing in New Zealand. There's like 10 dudes over there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a tiny gym. Like, you watch the videos of the gym, it's like, it's really small. Facts. So you can only pack some people in yeah. there over at city. And yeah, man, that's the thing. It's like, when you, you've got a good environment to work in, you're going to be a lot more productive, you're going to be a lot more creative, and you're going to want to work harder. That's true. Well, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. Speaking of a small work environment, I know we everyone's probably tired of it, man. But COVID, during the quarantine, during the lockdown, look, I've seen some of your IG. You over here like getting ready for Fight Island, throwing rocks and shit. Like you're doing all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of stuff, man. Uh, how has training been and keeping yourself busy during this time been for you? Um, I mean, obviously it's less in groups, but. Thankfully, my last fight, I had a really bad foot injury, so I was only able to do so much for a bit. I'm still recovering from that right now, so rehabbing. I'm glad. But uh, I mean, I built, gym, I built the gym in my garage now. Nice. You know, just waiting on the mat still, so I got a B boy style. I just got a bunch of cardboard boxes on the floor. <laughs> I, just got, uh, I just got the heavy bag in, and you know, I got weights. I got a double M bag. I got a dope grappling uh, dummy that I work with. My girlfriend, she's a two time wrestling state champion back in Florida. That's what's up. And uh, she so get, she you trains. Get, so you get work in right there, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we train too, man. And then uh, you know I do like a lot of running and stuff outside. And then I get into the gym every once in a while with two or three of us and hit some pads. We do some striking nice. drills. You know, nothing crazy, but yeah. I mean, it's been good. It's been good. And I feel like one thing I've always noticed is if you get injured, there's two types of people when you get injured. There's people that just sit on their ass and do nothing, and there's people that do whatever they can to work around yeah, it, right? Absolutely. So I feel like I've made, yeah, I feel like I've made huge, every time I've gotten injured, I make huge strides. And I feel like this since this pandemic we're going through right now, it's kind of the same thing. So like we're handicapped. Right. So now's right. the time to make right. huge strides in areas that you normally wouldn't pay attention to. That's, well, and, and I, would you think that people don't do that enough? And, and I understand as fighters, we, we want to get paid. We want to, you know, compete. You want to do stuff. But it does seem like for specific, I mean, you need that time off to grow and like to evolve. If you're yeah. fighting too often, do you feel like there's an issue between fighting too regularly and not fighting enough to get your skills? Yeah, 100%. I think it should go back and forth. Like, I feel like sometimes you should fight more frequently. You got to get the fights in, get the experience in, working with the ranks. But I think sometimes you need to pull off that as well and just train and not worry about the fight. 
I think uh, it's a big it's a big problem. Like I'm American to the core, man. Like I love my country. You know, I'm, I'm pretty patriotic. But I think the American mindset is just very much like hard work, hard work, hard work. And we get we get a lot of shit done. We got a lot of great athletes. But there's a lot to be said for pulling back on the reins, taking things slower, being more creative, and not just grinding all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with with the, the quarantine, with everything, training and stuff, there's Fight Island. Everyone's talking about Fight Island. Everyone's <laughs> talking about the yeah. UFC and stuff. How would you grade the UFC? And again, I know you're you know, an employee of the company or should I say like an, an, a contractor for the, the, the company. But for yourself, how what grade would you give the UFC over this last eight days? I mean... Those events, everything, as a fan of the fight game, how did you enjoy it? I give them an A minus. Right. It was dope, yeah. man. It, it, it was dope. Like, I think they handled everything super well, you know, like, especially with, like, um, the Jock Ray case. You know, Jock Ray came in, tested yeah. positive, but they knew he was sick, and so they had him separated from everybody else, completely isolated at the weigh ins, mask, gloved, super far away from your right Those hole. dudes were, like, down the hall I, from each other. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, bro, I feel like it, they handled everything super well. Um, they put on awesome events. The fucking empty arena, I like it. Yo. Like, I want I want to fight. I, I wish I wasn't injured right now because I've tried to fight like three, four times this oh, summer. Oh, man. I, yo, you know one thing I noticed, and I want to get your thoughts on this, to be the, the – for two things I noticed. One, be able to hear the strikes. When you hear them, yeah. it's, it gives you a totally different feel of the fight. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah, it makes it, real, man. It makes it feel so much more yeah. real. Even like um, – um, you know, the main event on Saturday on uh, it's not Corey Anderson, uh, uh, uh Will, Green Will Harris. Mando, yeah, where's or yeah, yeah, Walter. Will Harris, man. Like, they, they did a over him was on top of him at one point. They had the, the camera angle up like super close by his face, and everything else is quiet. And you're just like seeing over him on top of him hitting him, and just like it just makes it seem so much more real. Like, it really gives you the vibe of being there, dude. I think cool. super, you know, what I also like the post fight interviews. Are better yeah, the chip. interviews, <laughs> and not everyone's like hyped to the gills. Yeah, you know, a, little, a little more relaxed, man. So it's like you can hear them better. They're talking a little more crisp. Like yeah, it's I, nice. I, I can't. I like I, I'm not gonna lie. So I, I, I'm someone whom I didn't think we should be fighting yet. But as a fight fan, I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for the shits, right? Because I'm a fight fan, and watching yeah. it, dude, I was excited. I, I feel like everyone performed. And um, and seeing it, and again, that's what I was gonna ask you, man. Next, I mean, if this fight island happens, the infrastructure, whatever they say is ready. If they, it, you heal up, am I gonna see you on Fight Island? I hope so, man. <laughs> I want to go to Fight Island, bro. Like, that's dope. I love that idea. Like, you go into an island to fight. I heard the cage is on a beach too. Old, I don't old, know. old school bow dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> we still don't even know where the island's at, man. So, hey man, as long as it's I not can't, Jeffrey Epstein's but, island, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll either express or nothing. Right? Damn. Um, so, you know, so, in terms of that, groovy. How did I get to be how do you, How is it groovy, Lando? It, again, dope ass nickname. I think one of the most fun <laughs> nicknames out there. How did you get to be the groovy one? You know, man, uh, groovy things, man. Things that are groovy are things that have soul. That's what it is, yeah, right? I like that. Yeah. And how do, how do you come about soul, bro? You come about soul from adversity. True. You can go through adversity and got no soul, man. So that's what it is. Like, I've been through a lot of adversity in my life. I feel like I got a little bit of soul and it shows my fights. See, you know what's funny, man? I liked you before I got to talk to you. Now talking to you, you're a cool dude, man. Like I said, I hope we get to hang out one day, man. You, I like you, man. <laughs> um, all right. So, like I said, we're going to get you out of here soon, man. Again, thank you so much for your time. Um, I want to ask you this. During the time, and I've been asking everybody this, I want, I want to know this. If someone who's never seen you perform before, if we can pick one of your fights, which one of your fights would you choose to say, look, this is Lando Venata. You want to know who I am as a fighter? This is me right here. Which one of your fights would you, should I show people? <laughs> At the first round of any of them. I don't even know. I feel like... I'll tell you the ones that I wouldn't okay. pick. Okay. I wouldn't pick Drakkar and I wouldn't pick um, DeKessie. Okay. Okay. Why, why those because specifically? There's only two fights that I feel like I never mentally checked in. Okay. And so I, I never like I never got to let go in those mm-hmm. fights. People yeah. don't, I think, understand how difficult it is for fighters that mental 
check in? Like, how yeah. is how is that for you? I mean, because again, I, I did not obviously get to the level that you're at, but dude, it was it's nerve wracking. Like for you, how is that? It's I mean, ninety nine percent of the time, it's perfect. That's right. Sure. Like, it's perfect. Like going to fight, like I'm chill, I'm relaxed. I, I'm usually like sleeping in the locker room. Yeah. I wake up like five minutes before the walk, it's and time I'm to good go. to go. But sometimes, man, it's just like you can't get mm-hmm. there. You know, like. I've had a fight where I just had like a terrible wake up, and then the next day I'm just like I'm I'm so drained that I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to fight. Man, and I gotta step in there against a monster. And I'm like, fuck. yeah. And at the level you, you are, know? everyone's go. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. And then there's also been a point in my life like um, where I was going through like bad depression, bro. Like you know, real bad. And I was like, well, I gotta fight anyway, man. Like, mm-hmm. like I do, so I'm gonna go do it. And then just like you can't you can't show up. Like if you're dealing with too many outside stressors. You like fighting at your highest levels possible so making sure that you, your personal life is yeah. in order before you get outside that cage Dude. is like the most important thing I think people and that's one thing I love about having these conversations that I don't think people hear those sides of it enough we just look at it as like it's the gladiators that are going out there and then you got dudes like Stephen A. Smith saying that people are quitting this shit like <laughs> you know that's an idiot. Dude. I, I, it drives me crazy. I tell you what, though, a lot of people. So, like, we talk about Kobe, man. Yeah. Reading his book, like, he was a carpent, uh, carp, uh, uh, God damn, I can't think of the word. Carp, carpentalize. Oh, I know what you're talking about. He, oh, he, he compartmentalizes. Yeah, I can't, yes. I can't. Yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, he's able to do that so well that he was like going through, you know, the rape allegations. He's going through you know, divorce with his wife, uh, troubles with his yeah. family. And he was able to just. Put all that shit aside and go perform. Say and drop like you know, this people, game. People like some people can live their life stressful as hell, man, and just show up and do it anyway. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> yeah, I need my life to be in order a little fast. Well, that see, I love hearing that, man. I um, all right. Next up, you've told me your favorite knockout of all time. And I got your favorite fight, mm-hmm. which would fight at least not to watch. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of what is your favorite all time? If you go back and you're like, ah, this is my old school fight. I love watching this. This is my favorite fight of all time. What is that for you? Mm. Oh, man. Let's see. What have I fought? Tony, nah. Desi, nah. I really like the Bobby Green fight. That, that was, was a fun, fun, fun fight, dude. In fact, I feel like this. In terms of that, ah. Oh. That was one of my favorite fights of yours, man. That was a yeah. fun fight. Yeah. Yo, you I like, just, man, I let my emotions get the best of me in that first, though. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> he seems That's like he's a little like, annoying, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel like one of my favorite fights I go back and watch is um, two fights before I got in the UFC. I fought a dude named Chad Curry. Okay. Okay. In the event of uh, RFA card. Yeah. Yeah, I just I really like that one, man. My movement looked good. You got a first round knockout. Let's say a minute, a minute twenty nine in left. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, so we got you got to get yeah. people watching that one. And uh, and like I said, last one before we get you out of here. Any since we're we're still locked down, at least out here in Cali, we are. Um, for yourself, do you have any whether it be book or TV recommendations for people to check out? Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Right now I'm watching. The Man in the High Castle on Amazon Prime. Is that Prime. good? I, I keep hearing about it. So, so it's basically it's, it's a show about um, like post World War II, but the Nazis and the Japanese. Oh were. oh shit! And so <laughs> and so they're living in a world where half the country is run by the Nazis, and half the country is run by the Japanese. It's gnarly. It's it's a pretty cool I'll show. It's like a, we've knocked out out three seasons in like the last week or two. Oh, there's already three seasons in. Yeah, well, yeah, there's only four seasons. Oh, I'm through that's perfect. Right now. That gives us time to, to catch yeah, up. Good one, man. And then right now I'm reading um, uh, Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Great is book. The, uh, yeah, you've read, read it. I read it. Great book. Ryan yeah, Holiday is awesome. Yes, but to, tell, tell the people about it for me real quick. Yes. Yeah, I mean, basically it's just it's a book about – so he, he runs a, a page on stoicism and – the book is about you know finding stillness in your life, both in your mind, all three in your mind, in your spirit, and then in your body as well, and just and, you know being able to be still and enjoy the days. That's what's up. Dude, and I'm sure for you stuff like that, like we were just talking about, I'm sure that kind of fits into play. I feel like that kind of works with you know the mental state and everything, getting yourself in the right kind of mind yeah. frame. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I work with a great uh, sports psychologist, okay. dude, Doctor Shandon, who's local here in Albuquerque, okay. and 
I, I started working with him after the Jakar close fight. He's been a game changer in my life, man. Absolute game changer. Amazing, man. So do you feel like it just helps you just kind of just focus even yeah, better? Yeah, like, that? Every, I wake up every morning, I sit down, I do a bunch of breathing work, and I do visualization. Like, I visualize a fight, I visualize practice, visualize practice and techniques, you know, whatever it is. Normally, I visualize fights, like, random people. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what's up, That's man. good. Love so, it. Dude, I, I, I appreciate you, man. Um, where can people find you? At Groovy Lando. Instagram and Twitter. Absolutely, man. Well, Lando, man, Venata, man, thank you so much for joining the show. I really hope we get to do this again, man. It was a good time. Um, yo, when, when can we expect you back? I'm hoping July. Yeah. We'll see. See how my foot is healing, man. Uh, they told me like four to six months to heal this injury. Okay. So I'm still working on that, but I'm hoping to get back in in July. All right. Well, if you have, if you do get back in July, man, do you have any opponent like just circle like, oh, I want that guy? Anybody that's going to get me close to the top 15. Yeah, there it is, man. There it is. Orlando Venata, man, the groovy one brother. Thank you so much for joining me on the Fight Podcast today, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir, dude. Brother. You take care. You too. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was my conversation with Lando Venata, man. Yo, Lando's a super cool dude, man. Um, if you haven't seen him, like I said, the fights that he was talking about, the John Medesi fight was amazing. Um, the Bobby Green fight was amazing. His last win against Yancey Medeiros, he looked incredible. I'm telling you, man, this is a guy that is absolutely someone who could end up being a, 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 a title challenger, man. He is great. He is the guy. He rocked um, Tony Ferguson multiple times, almost won that fight. This dude is an absolute beast, man. The fact that he blessed us with his time, man, I'm, I'm super grateful. All right. Uh, with that being said, this has been episode 214 of the Fight Podcast. Check this out. Tonight, it is Wednesday. We will actually be on IG Live this, e- it is, it is evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. 5 p.m. Pacific time. We're doing the scrappy hour. The scrappy hour is finally here. We have a lot of fun. A little couple drinks, uh, a bunch of guests, questions, answers, even have some pro fighters coming on, man. So join us on the scrappy hour every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific, uh, Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. So um, without further ado, this has been the greatest combat sports and culture show in the entire universe. I am the Underground King, Serge Vicente. Thank you guys again so much for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on the Fight Podcast. Deuces.